You join us for the 2008 Austrian Grand Prix where the five lights that are on now go out and from pole position on the right, Mark Webber in the Toyota. Looked as if he'd gotten away well. Don't think Christian Alba's got away well from the front row alongside him. Into the first corner. Look at that contact between the two Toyotas into the first corner. The Castrol curve. But it is Weber from Button. But side by side with Button comes Kimi Raikkonen in the McLaren. And up to second goes Kimi Raikkonen in the McLaren BMW. And look at this. Jensen Button under pressure from Christian Alba's now going into the Remus curve. But Jensen Button hanging on to that position. He sits in third. Alba's fourth. And we got Nick Heidfeld up in fifth place. to Takuma Sato sixth. And then there's a battle between... Uh, Felipe Massa and Adrian Suttil for 7th place but Heidfeld versus Alba's going into the Gersa curve not making that one stick and then further back we've got Fernando Alonso 9th Sebastian Vettel and Lewis Hamilton the two Red Bulls 10th and 11th but there's your race leader and his name is Mark Webber very unlucky last time out at the Monaco Grand Prix running second behind Kimi Raikkonen who'd started that race from pole position but broke down very early with a puncture Heidfeld into the penultimate corner, Jochen Rint curve, taking fourth place off of Christian Albers. That is a position gained for the Williams driver. There is Mark Webber on board, but now we switch back to the outboard shot with Takuma Sato, looking to get up the inside of Christian Albers for fifth place. Albers left in space up the inside at the first corner. As through goes Fernando Alonso, who's dropped down to tenth behind Sebastian Vettel. Up front though, 1.6 seconds is the gap between Mark Webber and Kimi Raikkonen as Alonso was that side by side with somebody going through the little kink before turn 2, the Remus curve, and it's now turn 3 actually, was recently reassigned as out the Gersa curve, Webber, then Raikkonen, and there's a bit of a gap between those three drivers, you can see Jensen Button in third place with Nick Heifel looking quite good at the moment in the Williams which dropped off a bit in terms of form between after round three which was the Japanese Grand Prix very very wide line there from Sebastian Vettel as he had a look at Felipe Massa now he's becoming back under pressure from Fernando Alonso this is the battle for ninth place as they go underneath the A1 bridge this is the Red Bull ring but previously it was known as the A1 ring so that's why you're seeing that old sponsor up there as look at that, is that contact between Daniel Ricciardo and one of the other drivers, Gilles Bianchi, in 17th place, battling two, as they start their third lap. And up front, we can see Sato has moved up into fifth place, and look at that contact from behind, Daniel Ricciardo getting a nudge from somebody, it looked like a BMW Sauber, actually. BMW Sauber, particularly Montoya, not qualifying at all well. As look at that big lock of Hamilton up the inside of Vettel going into the Venus curve. That's 10th place for Lewis Hamilton. And now he's going to try and set up after the two Super Guris, but he's got Vettel to see to first. The two Red Bulls battling each other quite hard on this third lap of the race. At the moment, advantage Hamilton. 10th place. At the moment, the final points, but we're only on lap three. As into... The long left goes Hulkenberg, he's got Matthias Lauder, look at that, getting up the inside of him, and Hulkenberg is being engulfed, that's a Renault behind him, is that Robert Kubica? I think it must well be, as now he is in 14th place behind the Honda of Matthias Lauder. We'll do a quick recap of what happened in the Monaco Grand Prix, so as mentioned Mark Webber Retired with a puncture very early on, as you can see Alonso moving ahead of Felipe Massa for 8th place. And it was quite close behind Kimi Raikkonen at that point, but ever since Webber's re retirement, Raikkonen pretty much controlled the race from there on in and took his first victory of the season, and McLaren BMW's first win of the season as well. Second in that race was Fernando Alonso, which was a tremendous effort for him, considering the season he's had so far. And the third place, I think it was Jensen Button who took that position in the end, if I double check. Yep, he was third, and fourth was Takuma Sato. Fifth, Felipe Massa, and then the rest of them. Lewis Hamilton, Kamui Kobayashi, taking yet more points from McLaren. He's had quite an impressive season. And then the rest of the top ten. Montoya was in eighth place, and then ninth and tenth were Timo Glock and Nico Hulkenberg. So I have two BMW Saubers in the top ten. 
as Mark Webber sets a fastest lap, a 1 minute 10.762. He's extending the lead between himself and Kimi Raikkonen in second. The gap 1.9 seconds and it's been growing ever since the start of the race. So for the moment, Mark Webber looking quite good as Nico Hulkenberg under pressure from the Renault driver behind him I think it is Robert Kubica into the first corner not making that mistake as Ricardo versus Bianchi I think that would have been and you can see Jensen Button he's not exactly closing up to Kimi Raikkonen in fact he's 2.3 seconds behind and seemingly about to come under pressure from Nick Pfeiffer as Hulkenberg goes through the tight Remus curve you can see the green and white painted curve Quite old school in some ways. Normally the painted red and white. Into the Goethe curve comes Hulkenberg. And he is very much under pressure from the Renault driver of Robert Kubica. As into the Jochenwind curve briefly. There we have a shot at Jensen Button. And then very, very wide goes Sebastian Vettel. I think that's exiting turn 8, approaching the Jochenwind curve. I think there's a Nicky Lauda curve and the Gerhard Berger curve. In fact, I think Turn 1 was recently renamed to the Nicky Lauda curve. So, uh, let's scrap cash roll and let's actually call Turn 1 Nicky Lauda. So, this is the corner that Sebastian Vettel is approaching, but now we switch to Jensen Button into the Remus curve as Hulkenberg once again defending his position from Robert Kubica in the Renault, both running Pirelli tyres. Very different teams, but the same tyre supplier. Three different tyre suppliers in this particular championship, Michelin, Pirelli and Bridgestone. Only two teams run Bridgestone tyres and they are the Honda and the Force Indy teams. Then we've got quite a few on Pirelli's and slightly less on Michelin's. There's another one of those teams on Pirelli's, that is the Super Aguri that we're looking at of Felipe Massa. Red Bull, Toro Rosso and McLaren all running at Michelin tyres as running very wide onto the kerb scores Matthias Lauda as he tries to keep his pace up as Sato has now moved up into fourth position ahead of Nick Heidfeld now would that have been going into the first corner well this is Jensen Button and whoa big smash Rubens Barrichello getting it completely wrong at the exit of the Gerhard Berger curve and careening straight off into the wall that is two wheels gone and retirement for Rubens Barrichello so we're down to 21 runners on lap 7, and last of those 21, Timo Glock. Ferrari not quick at all, it seems, in this particular meeting. Perez and Glock were way down the order, and they'll be hoping for quite a high attrition rate if they're to make any point scores. You can see Barrichello's car sauntering its way back towards the wall as it looks for a marshal, or an invisible crane to help winch the Renault over. That's race leader Mark Webber going through, then Kimi Raikkonen, and then uh, in a moment, there goes Jensen Button, and now new fourth place driver Takuma Sato. Still got both Force Indias running in the top seven, Sutil sixth, Alba seventh. Alba had started on the front row, but he hasn't exactly done much with it, except drop down to seventh. But if Force India remain in the top seven, then they'll get some useful points. As very wide, is that going to be a smash? It is a smash for the BMW Sauber. Is that Hulkenberg or is that Juan Pablo Montoya? A bit hard to tell from the distance in the helmets, but I think it is Montoya actually just dropped down to 21st place. So his miserable season continues because he's smashed out of the Australian Grand Prix. Then he's smashed out of the Japanese Grand Prix as well. So he's not had a good season at all, has Montoya. Didn't do too badly at Adelaide and Sepang. And then as for his other races, he got points in Monaco. But the other race at Hockenheim, he also smashed out of that one. So pretty much overdriving what is not a front-running car, but it's a car that isn't too bad. Or hasn't been too bad so far this season. It currently sits in... Well, ninth in the championship, but there has been quite a good series of point scores between a lot of the teams. I think Kubica might well have overtaken. No, actually, no, they're still in... Well, it's 15th. Uh, Ricardo's actually got ahead of this lot, actually, so 
that's where the position changes come from. I wonder why Hulkenberg was showing in 15th, even though he has still got the Renault for company. It's because Danny Ricardo appears to be on the move. More yellow flags, so what's happened? Oh, no, it is Ricardo. I've jinxed him. That was unfortunate, as he has kept the engine running, and he is going to do a quick half donut on the grass. Now, is he going to rejoin properly? Well, he's got it facing seemingly the right way. And he's going to rejoin the track. Where has he actually gone off? That must be the final two corners. As he goes over the gravel. I think that's the final corner. As he rejoins. Now in effectively 20th place and last. As having a look at an overhead shot of Nick Heidfeld. And he's going through the left-handers of the circuit. Exiting the Gerhard Berger curve. Now into Jochen Rint, he's got a Force India coming up alongside him and taking a position away is Adrian Sutter. Up into fifth goes the Force India driver. I was going to say German, but it's, t it's German versus German on that occasion. And new fastest lap for Sato, who's taken third somewhere. J uh, Jensen Button's dropped down to fourth behind Takuma Sato. I've definitely missed that as we've been as we had been looking at the smashed Montoya and the spun Ricardo. Lost 14th place to that driver there, Nico Hulkenberg, who's quite a now, quite a distance ahead of Robert Kubica. Now I wonder if Kubica's had a look and has dropped back as a result of it. Oh, Heidfeld's just taken fifth back off of Adrian Suttil, so they're going to do a bit back for a bit longer. Does look as if uh, Suttil has got the fast. In fact, Suttil now losing another position to Christian Albers. So as Heidfeld had a go and being quite aggressive about it. Adrian Suttil another position to his own teammate. I wonder if that is the case. Meanwhile, Mark Webber still leads. It's nearly three seconds. The gap between himself and Kimi Raikkonen. Takuma Sato now to third place. And Jensen Button two seconds behind the Japanese driver, three-time champion, Takuma Sato. Uh, but he is himself two seconds ahead of Nick Heidfeld and into the first corner. And another new fastest lap for Sato. He's on the move. As he tries to make his way up the order. Massa has dropped down behind Sebastian Vettel now. So we've now got both Red Bulls in the top 10. Hamilton 9th and Vettel in 10th place. And Vettel has dropped a fair bit back behind Hamilton ever since their early battle. That's 7.3 seconds as Ricardo locks up going into the first of the two lefts. It used to be the Nicky Lauda curve, but Nicky Lauda has changed his allegiance from that corner to the first corner. That must be the Gerhard Berger curve that we've gone through, and now into the final two corners, the Jochen Rint curve and then the Red Bull curve. It used to be the A1 curve back in the day, but since the circuit name change, let's assume that it's called the Red Bull curve. Uh, so let's have a look. That's Nico Hulkenberg, who's coming back under pressure from uh, Robert Kubica in the Renault, going down into the Gersa curve. So far, holding 14th place. What well, strategies everyone's going to run on? Because we saw a very, very curious three-stop strategies being run by most of the field at Monaco. They seemed to come in very early on about lap 14, then about 12 laps later they came in again, and then another 12 laps later, about lap 38, lap 39, half distance of the 78 lap race, making their third and final stops, and then doing the rest of the race, pretty much half the race, on that one stint, so very unusual three-stop strategies taken by most of the most drivers, except Adrian Sutton. He only stopped twice in that race, but like most of the fields, those stops came very early. And I think that Sutton must have made his last pit stop about lap 30, because I was expecting him to do the race strategy, but in, in fact, that lap 30 second pit stop, that was his last stop of the race. So very intriguing stuff at Monaco. And very few retirements as well. I think there was only two retirements in that whole race. Mark Webber and there was another driver as well who, off the top of my head, I can't quite remember. We're having a look at the Force India duo of Christian Albers and Adrian Sutter. They're running 6th and 7th. That was another new fastest lap for Takuma Sato. So he's now just 2.7 seconds behind Kimi Raikkonen now. Could be seeing Sato move up into second place, but it won't be for a good, good few laps. Certainly not until the first pit stop window opens. I wonder if it's going to be a mixture of two and three stops. 
or maybe even one and two stops. Let's see what happens in the next few laps. As that's Perez under pressure from, I think he was under pressure from one of the Toro Rosses of Paul de Resta. It's a battle for 17th place at the moment. It is Paul de Resta and bang goes the engine in the back of Sergio Perez. So Sergio Perez becomes the third retirement of the race. This time around, it's not due to an accident, it's due to a massive mechanical failure. Uh, look at this, Kimi Raikkonen versus Takuma Sato. Kimi Raikkonen has got a problem, I think, because Sato caught up to him very, very, very quickly. Now, are we going to see Kimi Raikkonen come into the pits for an unscheduled pit stop? He has made it into the pits, so that's at least something. Look at the smoke coming out of the back of Sergio Perez's, well, I was going to say engine, but it looked like it was coming out of his cockpit. You can see now the Ferrari engine is on fire. He'd better pull over pretty quickly, otherwise he's going to be creating a bit of a nuisance for everyone. A little contact between Alonso and Sutil going into the first corner. This is now for sixth place because Reitman is having a mechanical ailment remedied. So we'll be seeing the McLaren driver drop down the order. Now, was he running a two-stop strategy? he will have to bring that one forward or convert to a three-stop strategy. By the way, it's certainly compromised this race very heavily. So what's that done for the order as finally Sergio Perez admits defeat and pulls over onto the gravel? Because as you know, gravel is resistant to fire. And the fire goes out as he gets craned away. So Weber holds a 6.3 second lead now over to Kumasato. And Jensen Button, some 4.6 seconds off of the Japanese driver, and is only 1.3 seconds ahead of Nick Heidfeld. So Jensen Button either on a heavy fuel load, or he's struggling a bit with the car, as Hulkenberg, that's against Kimi Raikkonen, actually. So Hulkenberg versus Raikkonen at the Gersa Curve. Both these teams running the same engine, and for once, it's the uh, works team ahead of the customer team. But of course, Raikkonen has had to just make a pit stop for an unspecified mechanical problem. Let's assume that it's an electrical gearbox problem and that, oh, I think Kimi Raikkonen was being challenged by Jules Bianchi and he's got him. Bianchi moves ahead of Raikkonen. So maybe Raikkonen's topped up his fuel. Or maybe Hulkenberg had a go at Raikkonen. Who knows? But I suspect if Raikkonen starts dropping back, that would have been the case. Yeah, coming to the pits, fitting the steering wheel and all should be good. So Hulkenberg now inching away from Jules Bianchi, but Bianchi has now got Kimi Raikkonen looking at the inside into the Venus curve. Can he do something about it? No, not quite. You can see the Michelin branding on the side of the tyres. I think Williams are also on Michelins. There's the red walled Pirelli tyres on Mark Webber's car. It's Takuma Sato once again setting a new fastest lap as Hamilton versus Alonso going into the Jochen Rint curve. Tiny little lockup from Hulkenberg going into the first left in the mid sector of the lap and coming out of the Berg curve. And it is the Jochen Rint curve, but he's got a crest to go over first and now turning right. And he's a bit ragged at the moment, is Hulkenberg. He's not very comfortable with the handling of his BMW Sauber. Could be tyres as well. I mean, uh, oh, now that wow, Weber having a bit of a lockup, so. He's noticing the Takuma Sato threat and he's now stepped on the anchors and trying to push hard to get away from him, basically. Outboard shot of Jules Bianchi before we switch to the two Force Indians. Now, Sutto, that's Albers actually having a minor lockup going into the left and then the Nicky makes the Gerhard Berger curve. And out of it and up and over the crest which formed part of the old Österreich ring. And, oh, that'll be an interesting race to watch. This car is around the Österreich ring, the much faster version of the circuit we are currently racing on. In the Styrian Mountains, located near Zeltweg and Spielberg. On board with Robert Kubica in the Renault, currently in 13th place. About six seconds off of Felipe Massa, who now runs in 12th place. Massa's dropped back behind Matthias Lauda and Kamuri Kobayashi. And off the track goes Hulkenberg. Big spin. Now, is that at the final corner? Same place as Ricardo. It looks like it. 
And now Hulkenberg's going to show off his rallying skills on the grass as he spins the car round and rejoins. Lots of runoff, so uh, you can get a bit lost here if you're not careful. As now he's onto the gravel and he's going to turn left and rejoin the circuit. No problem there, but dropped a heap load of time. So that will have moved Gilles Bianchi and Kimi Räikkönen up a place each as we have a look at Mark Webber who is... Well he lost 8 tenths of a second on that particular sector to Takuma Sato. Now I wonder was that because of the spun Hulkenberg? It could well have been. There is Hulkenberg and what corner is he at? He's going to turn hard right at the Remus curve. So Hulkenberg's already a lap down and that's a disaster for him. Disastrous race for BMW Sauber pretty much in general. As he turns right into the Gersa curve. Very tricky right hander, downhill braking zone, very easy to lock up. And yeah, he is a lap down on Mark Webber, so maybe that's where Webber lost the time actually. In that he was trying to overtake Nico Hulkenberg to put a lap on him. And of course, Hulkenberg's mistake, that's now dropped him behind the Australian Daniel Ricciardo, who spun at the exact same place. It must have been going into this one here, just way too quick, and then... Oh, and into the pits comes Daniel Ricciardo, so at least Hulkenberg has gained a position there. Jensen Button versus Nick Heidfeld for third place. And now we're going to be seeing quite a lot of Hulkenberg in this race at the moment, as Sato pumps in another new fastest lap. As he gets the gap down to 4.3 seconds between himself and Mark Webber. Further back, Lewis Hamilton has just overtaken Fernando Alonso for 7th place, so the Red Bull driver on the move. And Sutter's just taken Christian Albers for 5th place, so Force India's doing a bit of a swap. Or maybe they were just back on hard, who knows? But Force India looking a lot quicker in this, and a big lock up for Hulkenberg. That is a car that doesn't look good. If it is tyres, I mean, he is running the medium compounds, as it was his teammate before he spat it into the wall, then the medium's not really working very well on the BMW Sauber. And I can reveal also that McLaren's also running the medium tyres as well. In terms of the setup choices, I could reveal some of that as well, but we're going to have another look at Nico Hulkenberg as he is about to go a lap down on the charging Sato. What's the gap now between Sato and race leader? Sato puts in another new fastest lap. It's only a tenth quicker that time around, but still the fastest lap nonetheless. Uh, McLaren's, they were focusing on aero. No, they weren't. They were focusing on one lap pace for this Austrian Grand Prix meeting. And the BMW Sauber, we are looking at there, they were focusing on race pace. That's done them no good at all because Montoya's crashed and Hulkenberg has made a mistake. So Takuma Sato. Gained two tenths in that first sector. Possibly with the help of some slipstream. But he's still the quicker driver at the moment. So Jensen Button, how far back is he compared to Takuma Sato? As Hulkenberg locks it up again going into the first left of the mid sector. But 9.3 seconds behind Takuma Sato, and he's only half a second ahead of Nick Heidfeld now. I think this that's the battle we should be seeing at the moment. And it looks like the Williams driver is going to make a move on, I suspect, quite a heavily fueled Jensen Button, because 13 seconds in 21 laps is a fair chunk of time to lose. So it could be that Jensen Button is running a one-stop strategy compared to Webber and Sato's two stops. So that'll be interesting to see if how that pans out, if that is indeed the case. Approaching the Remus curve, 18th place Nico Hulkenberg, 23 seconds behind 17th place Timo Glock. So the MW South are going to be needing a miracle if they're going to score points. We did have a look at Jensen Button very briefly, but now we switch to Gil Bianchi in 14th place, chasing Robert Kubica for 13th. That's the gap between the two. Well, he lost half a second in that final sector, so Bianchi probably making a small mistake in the Jochen Rint curve. That's him going through the first corner, the Mickey Lauda curve, and now the long straight, which 
nowadays has a chicane in it to help with the motorcyclists because that left kink of turn two is a very dangerous one for motorbikes leading into a very very sharp right so quite a lot of accidents so understandable that they have built a chicane even if it is a bit ugly Sato, that was another fastest lap for him, and the gap is now 3.999 seconds between himself and Mark Webber. Looking good for Toyota so far, both their drivers are in first and third, and Roy held a healthy lead in the Constructors' Championship over McLaren, and if, but McLaren are not having a good race so far, so that will most certainly boost Toyota's uh, cha championship chances. Worth mentioning between Monaco and this race, Austria, uh, we had a mid-season test session for teams to develop their cars, maybe develop their drivers, and general general seeing where you are compared to the competition. But not only that, but some teams potentially using some of their upgrade tokens. Matt Webber pits, lap 22. Matt Webber comes into the pits, as does Sakuma Sato. So both those drivers coming in quite early. If it's a two-stop strategy, but I think it should still be a two-stop strategy for these two drivers. So no doubt that will put Jensen Button into the lead of the race. He wasn't that far behind. And how long will this pit stop take? They do take quite a while, these pit stops. Although in Monaco they were fairly speedy. As we switch to Nick Heidfeld, now second in Williams. We've got Christian Albers running in third place now because quite a lot of drivers making pit stops, including Sebastian Vettel, Adrian Sutter, Matthias Lauder. But if that's Lauder in the pits, then he's pitted at exactly the same time as Takuma Sato. And double stacking usually is not the way to go, particularly in the uh, age of refueling. Robert Kubica is another driver to make a pit stop, as once again Hulkenberg locks it up going into the left. What else has happened? Hamilton up to fourth place now. Only four tenths of a second behind Christian Albers, so Lewis Hamilton could well be challenging the Dutchman for temporarily the final podium spot. But I suspect that Hamilton may well pick first of the of the battling two. Fernando Alonso is two seconds behind. Although I think well that was Hamilton versus Albers and then similarly. That's Alonso, he's actually putting a lap on the Toro Rosso Daniel Ricciardo there. As into the pits, that was Lewis Hamilton into the pits, as is Nick Heidfeld, as is Christian Albers, as is Kamui Kobayashi. Pit stops are plenty on lap 23. So at the moment Jensen Button is in the lead of the race, though I suspect on a one-stop strategy and how far is he ahead of Fernando Alonso? He's got 10 seconds over the Spaniard, who drove quite well in Monaco last time out, to get a very good start. I think it was from 6th on the grid up to 3rd, and then 2nd once Mark Webber had retired, and then pretty much just stayed there. But it was very much controlled by the McLaren of Kimi Raikkonen. Uh, just extending the gap by about a tenth, maybe two per lap, but that was enough, and won the race by about 6 seconds come the end. A decently controlled drive as Timo Glock in 11 up the inside of Christian Albers into the Remus curve and that's a position taken for Timo Glock so temporarily up into the points could be another one on a one-stop strategy as locking up briefly into the left goes Felipe Massa as his teammate from second place comes into the pits so that's going to put Matt Webber back up into second place at the moment how far is he behind Jensen Button let's see the gap as he goes over the line the button was about, give or take, about 13 seconds behind Mark Webber before the Australian made his first pit stop. Are we seeing anybody else coming into the pits? Let's have a look. I think Massa's due into the pits pretty soon. That was Sebastian Vettel making a move on Christian Albers, actually. Going into a Jochen Rint curve. So Weber is 18.6 seconds behind Jensen Button, so let's say pit stops here take about 32 seconds, or rather you lose 32 seconds from coming into the pits to exiting it. 
or rather coming into the pits to cross in the first sector point because their first sector point about just in the turn two kink I think as Hulkenberg is going to come into the pits to get rid of what I suspect is going to be two very heavily flat spotted front tyres and you might as well take on some new rear tyres while you're at it into the final corner that was Takuma Sato now we switch to Christian Albers who lost that place to uh, Sebastian Vettel so in amongst that pit stop sequence Kimi Raikkonen is now back up to 7th place but was briefly running in 2nd place before having to make that unscheduled pit stop so he's lost place to uh, Jensen Button at the moment Takuma Sato and Felipe Massa who I think has got a pit stop to make it could be another one on a one-stop strategy. He was dropping back and immediately after making the pit stop for some new tyres, Hulkenberg is going to flat spot his front tyres all over again on his outlap. The Kimi Raikkonen now in seventh. He's lost that places to Nick Heidfeld and Adrian Suttil. So I think he's in a net sixth place at the moment. There's lap 27 now. We have gone... Well, we've already gone past one third distance as we have a look at Jensen Button, race leader. He's a lap ahead of Gilles Bianchi at that point as a big lock up for Matthias Lauda on those Bridgestone tyres into the Remus curve. How far is he behind the competition? He's 2.1 seconds behind that driver in front of him there, Robert Kubica, as the pole goes into the Gersa curve. The gap between Button and Webber extended a little bit just by a tenth of a second. But Jensen Button on his slightly lower fuel load now, uh, looking to try and increase increase the gap between himself and Mark Webber, or try and get as much of a gap as possible to stay in contention of a good podium finish. But depending on his pace, it could well be a race win. It'll be interesting to see how his one-stop strategy, if he is indeed on that, will pan out. As locking up into the left goes Daniel Ricciardo, struggling with his Toro Rosso. Already had one off in this race, a big one at the final corner, but he rejoined from that with very few problems other than a lot of lost time. Just in front of him is Paul de Resta, so not a great race for Toro Rosso, and they do sit last in the team's championship, so it shouldn't be too surprising that they are last at the moment, but it would be good for them to have a good race once in a while. The gap going up a bit between Button and Webb is now 19.1 seconds, so that is an indication of a lower fuel load. But if he was too stopping, his fuel load would be a lot, lot lower at this stage, so I do believe Jensen Button is on a one-stop strategy. There's Takuma Sato, he's only 2.7 seconds behind Mark Webber, so both pitted at the same time. And it could be that Sato has got the faster car, certainly compared to Mark Webber. At the moment, Jensen Button has track position as we watch Christian Albers. Having a little lock-up on both front tyres going into the Mickey Lauda curve. And he's got Kamui Kobayashi lurking behind him. In front of these two, you've got Sebastian Vettel in 11th place and Timo Glock in 10th place. Glock getting his season somewhat together as he scored some points at Monaco and at Hockenheim and at Sepang as well so after a poor start to the season he's not doing too badly now and if I check how he's doing against Sergio Perez well Perez is actually in front at the moment by four points because Perez had a fifth place at Suzuka a ninth place at Melbourne and a seventh place at Sepang through the Gerst curve briefly that was that was Jensen Button as that's Hulkenberg I think that is a lap behind Massa yeah Massa's running in fourth place at the moment for the Super Guri yet to make a pit stop and just trying to work out who is actually on stopping it looks like Jensen Button and Felipe Massa are both in stopping in this race I think Timo Glock is one stopping as well we've got yellow flags out well, certainly not Paul DeResta, who's there in 17th place. So, 
Hughes had an off and he has had a mechanical dram. It's Jensen Button! Jensen Button has crashed out! Where's that come from? As Paul De Resta comes into the pits for his first pit stop. But that was unexpected, so where on earth has Jensen Button smashed it? We haven't seen this. There he is. It's at the same corner as Montoya and Barrichello's accident. So that Gerhard Berger curve proving particularly tricky. So we're not going to see Jensen Button's one-stop strategy pan out after all. Matt Webber retakes the lead off the race. Takuma Sato back up to second. Now we've got Felipe Massa up into third place. And Nick Hyde fell fourth. Two and a bit seconds behind the Brazilian. There is the Brazilian. Look at him now. Third place. And he could be set for a podium finish if things go well for him. But you can see behind him, Nick Heidfeld trying to make his way through the traffic. That's getting past Paul de Resta. Next target, Nico Hulkenberg. Who once again makes his flat spot a little bit big. Adrian Suttle in fifth place at the moment. 1.5 seconds behind Heidfeld. There he is in the background. And Kimi Raikkonen now up to sixth place. Um, not exactly all over the back of Adrian Suttle. So I think he's sort of pacing himself in this middle stint. I mean, making an earlier pit stop, he's probably looking after the tyres a little bit. We've got in seventh. Lewis Hamilton in seventh place. Fernando Alonso in eighth. Timo Glock in ninth place. And Sebastian Vettel now in tenth place. Christian Albers in eleventh. And then I think that was the battling Kamui Kobayashi behind. Behind Christian Albers, actually. And off goes Hulkenberg, so... Oh, he's going to rejoin. That's dangerous, but luckily for him, there was no car in his immediate vicinity. So Hulkenberg's struggles continue. He should be able to rejoin from there. Maybe he's just picking his right moment to try and rejoin. Wheel spinning and spin it back round, back onto the grass and gravel, but that should be okay. So Hulkenberg rejoining. As Felipe Massa, no such lockups for him going through the Remus curve. And then the straight with a couple of curves in it. I think that this was part of the old Osterreich ring. Um, Gersa curve was a lot, a lot slower now than it was back then. Try to remember which one was the Bosch curve. Is this going to be another lockup? Yeah, I can just about see another lockup there. Once again, we are seeing a lot of Hulkenberg. So let's see Matt Webber, 2.1 seconds ahead of Takuma Sato. That gap is still quite small. Could go either way in the second round pit stops. We could well be seeing a battle on track between the two. Looks as if the win is between Webber and Sato. There is the race leader, Mark Webber. Going through that little kink of two before the Remus curve. Gap coming down slightly in the first sector, just by a tenth of a second. That's just the progress that Sato has been making. Into the Jochen Rint curve comes Hulkenberg. Once again, very wide, and following him in sympathy is the Renault of Robert Kubica. Now, is Kubica actually in ninth? No, I don't think he's in 19th place. I think he's just a lap ahead of Hulkenberg. That's just how badly Hulkenberg's race is going at the moment. There's Takuma Sato, just two seconds behind Mark Webber. Now make that 1.9 seconds as we go over the crest into the Jochen Rint curve. And he stays on the track, no problem there. Going through the final corner, the Red Bull curve. The tarmac's slightly darker than usual, actually. It could be a recently resurfaced version of the Red Bull ring. As Kimi Raikkonen puts a lap on the Toro Rosso there. As he goes into the Jochen Rint curve, how far is he behind Adrian Suttil? 1.6 seconds behind the Force India driver. 1.7 actually, as into the pits comes Timo Glock. This should be his only stop, but it's a little bit earlier than I'd imagine. It's only on lap, well it'd be on his lap 32, because race leader is on lap 33. I think that's the third lap in the row now that Hulkenberg has run perilously wide at the Jochen Rint curve and Sato 1.7 seconds behind you can see behind Hulkenberg is Robert Kubica and just behind Robert Kubica that was Matthias Lauda in the other Honda hasn't quite reached his same merriments as his Hockenheim podium but Matthias Lauda still 
still in the team and when he when he's on form he can be a good number two driver to this one here to Kumasato crossing the line 1.6 seconds now the gap between Weber and Sato as we go into the Mickey Lauda curve right curb outside curb and accelerate away that was pretty much nicely done as we go underneath the Warsteiner which was a type of beer I think a type of Austrian beer into the pits that's Felipe Massa I think into the pits from third place that will put Nick Heifeld up there as a um, getting a whole load of understeer there was Adrian Sutto as he tries to challenge Nick Heifeld actually the gap between those two is just three tenths of a second is this approaching the Gersa curve or is this approaching the Remus curve and again a lot of understeer going into the Remus curve but he's taken it a good outbreaking manoeuvre there from Adrian Sutto to take third as Heifeld I think he got I think he got bullied out onto the outside of the circuit because he's now dropped to sixth place behind Kimi Raikkonen and Lewis Hamilton. So Adrian Suttil's aggression has cost Heidfeld, particularly Heidfeld, dropping from third to sixth. But it does show actually that the Force Indy car is the quicker one at the moment compared to the Williams. Now how much has Kimi Raikkonen gained on Adrian Suttil as a result of that? We'll see as we cross the sector point, it's 1.2 seconds, so overall gaining a bit. And Lewis Hampton just two seconds behind Kimi Raikkonen now, so we could be seeing a... Well, it should be... could be a five-way fight, actually, for third place between Suttil, Raikkonen, Hamilton, Heidfeld and Alonso. Alonso is not too far behind either. So we've got a good battle for third developing, and... Maybe in a few laps time we could be having a good battle for the lead developing because Sato is only 1.5 seconds behind Mark Webber. And do my eyes to see me or did Hulkenberg get the Jochenrink curve correctly this time? Well anyway we're having a look at third place Adrian Suttil. You can see behind Kimi Raikkonen, Lewis Hamilton, Heidfeld, Alonso. Vettel is some 5 seconds behind Fernando Alonso at this stage so he's not really in the battle. Um, he has got in to the points though, which isn't too bad for himself. Both Red Bulls in the top eight, so good race for them so far. Where are they in the championship? Because they... Well, you can see Mark Webber closing in on the Timo Glock Ferrari in front of him. Sergio Perez blew up earlier on. Big flat spot making even bigger there for Nico Hulkenberg going into the Gersa curve as he's about to go lap down on Matthias Lauda of all people. Uh, Red Bull sits sixth in the championship at the moment, um, 11 points ahead of the Williams BMW, just one point behind Force India and Super Aguirre actually. Uh, both of those two teams are tied for fourth in the championship and well he did it quite well the last lap around but Hulkenberg wide at the apex of the Jochenrink curve as he's about to go lap down on Matthias Lauda now lift off the throttle a bit and let the Honda driver through. He's done exactly that. Hulkenberg 18th and last at the moment. Yeah, it's Toyota that leads the Constructors' Championship at the moment. They sit on 141 points, 31 ahead of McLaren BMW. Um, could have increased it by a heck of a lot more, but for Button smashing it at the Gerhard Berger curve. Although they have got Mark Webber still leading the race. Third in the championship at the moment is Honda. There are 93 points. 17 behind the McLaren BMW team. Then as mentioned, Force India, Super Gary, Red Bull. Williams are on 33 points. They're in seventh in the championship. One point ahead of both Ferrari and BMW Sauber. Renault sit tenth. That's despite Robert Kubica's brilliant podium finish at Adelaide. That was Fernando Alonso. I think the Toro Rosso is trying to unlap himself there. Now then, that's not to be advised because Alonso is in 7th and the Toro Rosso is probably down in about 16th place at the moment. I think that was Paul Di Resta. And speaking of Toro Rosso, they're 11 points behind Renault. And they sit on 10 points. Uh, that 10 points just came in one race and that's courtesy of Daniel Ricciardo at Adelaide. Kumasato. He had a bit of a toll in that blade, actually, but still managed to finish in the points. Where was he in that blade, actually? Let's have a look at that. 
eight points, so that was sixth place at Adelaide for Takuma Sato. Yeah, I think Daniel Ricciardo just come into the pits. That would be his first second pit stop. That's fairly early, actually, for a second stop, so maybe Ricciardo has gone a bit rogue and has decided on a three-stop strategy. We'll keep an eye on that one. But most of the field taking two stops for this race, except for Jensen Button, Felipe Massa and Timo Glock. Through the heat haze. And Lum... Oh, I thought he got that correctly, actually, but ran a bit too wide. He hit the apex well, but too wide onto the kerb. Through the Gerhard Berg curve, Mark Webber into Kumasato. The gap is just 1.3 seconds, still closing, and soon Sato will be able to feel the effects of the slipstream from the back of the Toyota. And this is basically the grudge match between Japan, Honda versus Toyota, as into the first corner goes Kamura Kobayashi in ninth place now, and now we've got both McLarens in the top nine, Reichman having recovered up to 4th place behind Sutil and Kobayashi running in ninth ahead of Christian Alves now so at some point Kobayashi has overtaken Alves on the circuit now he's going to try and close in to the back of Sebastian Vettel running in 8th place at the moment he sits 3.2 seconds off of the Red Bull driver is this going to be another one for Hulkenberg, who's certainly giving it some on that kerb there? I think that was at the exit of the Gerhard Berger curve. It's the apex well, it's the exit curve quite well. I think he's gaining his rhythm now. But he is some 24 seconds behind Paul de Resta and dropping back by about a tenth per sector. Oh, now he's locked up. Now and back to Takuma Sato, 1.2 seconds behind Mark Webber, race leader. About to start another lap, this will be lap 40, crossing the line, there goes Webber, there goes Sato, both on their 40th laps now. Subtle, 19.5 seconds behind these two, so definitely a two horse race. But who is it going to, who's going to win out, because I think Sato is still looking for his first win of the season. He's He's done quite well in terms of point scores. He's had a podium in in Melbourne and then Sepang Hockenheim as well. Uh, only one race out of the points, and that was his crash at Suzuka. He was crashing from the race lead, I believe that was, at the Suzuka races. And the team boss was not very happy about that and somehow tried to blame Sebastian Vettel for that, even though it was pretty clear that Sato had made a mistake. It was just sheer coincidence that Vettel crashed a corner before. Although having said that, Vettel did shunt Matthias Lauder out of the race at the Degna curve in the early stages, so I think that's probably where the where the blame was attempted. And why not? If you take out one driver, you're gonna blame you're gonna blame him for, for not being part of the other driver's accident. There's an overhead shot of Paul De Resta that we're looking at as he's going into the left in the middle of the circuit into the burger curve he goes very fast section this and quite an enjoyable section in these modern cars as said before it'd be fun to see uh, these cars race at the Österreich ring just for a bit of novelty keeping an eye on the lead gap between Weber and Sato 1.1 seconds now between those two it's getting closer still. I wonder if it's going to have to be have to be an overcut for Takuma Sato to try and jump Mark Webber, race leader. Way wide onto the kerbs goes Felipe Massa, who is now down in 13th place and struggling quite a bit with his very heavy fuel load. One of the couple of drivers remaining in the race on a one-stop strategy. And once everyone makes their second pit stops, it could come into play, but if Mass is struggling this much, then may well be on course for just a few points or so. So it looks more likely that Adrian Suttle, or whoever is in that battle for third place, will be getting a podium finish. Could be Adrian Suttle, actually. I mean, he has had only the one podium finish this season. That was his magnificent win at Adelaide. 
And since then he's had a 9th at Suzuka and an 8th at Sepang, but not much else. I mean, since, I mean, the Malaysian, German and Monaco rounds were a bit of a struggle for the Force India team. Somewhat off the pace. In fact, Christian Albers didn't score any points at all in those three races, so a bit of a lean spell for Force India, but certainly back on pace for this particular weekend. Could well be that they've used some tokens. I suspect Renault have definitely used tokens approaching this race because they've been qualifying very well down the order, but they seemed a bit more on the pace this time around. Uh, Kibitza actually qualified quite well. But I can reveal actually with McLaren and BMW Sauber, uh, they have not used any more upgrade tokens between Monaco and Austria. BMW Sauber did use some tokens between Suzuka and Sepang. Yes, that's correct. It's between Suzuka and Sepang. Kimi Räikkönen has just come into the pits for his second pit stop. Second pit stop this will be. He made his first one very unscheduled, but he'll have made that his first pit stop. So he'll drop down the order a bit. The target is to get out back ahead of Felipe Massa. If he gets out ahead of Massa, then that'll be that'll be track position gained on the Brazilian. Yeah, McLaren haven't used any upgrade tokens yet, and we'll see how the next few races go for them before they decide to use any more. We've got the British Grand Prix next after this at Silverstone, and then we actually st oh spin Hulkenberg spinning once again. That's at the Yock and Rint curve and getting pretty much in the way of Felipe Massa and I think he was about to get in the way of somebody else as well keeping out in the background, yeah he did, it was the Williams and I think that must have been Gil Bianchi in fact look at this, Mark Webber versus Takuma Sato right together so Bianchi holding up those two and to a, to a larger extent Nico Hulkenberg as Lewis Hamilton goes into the Jochen Ring curve off the track goes Hamilton, loot from 4th place that is a costly mistake for himself exactly the same spot as, pr well pretty much exactly the same spot as Daniel Ricciardo and Nico Hulkenberg. And it's taken a while to rejoin as well, spins the rear tyres up a little bit. Guys, it's a disaster for himself. Now I'm keeping an eye out on the gap between Weber and Sato once again. I think Weber's pulled out a little bit over the Japanese driver because it's now up to a second. And Hamilton is oh, he's still dropping down the order. He's, this is a disaster for him. Now what's that done to the race order? Well, you've got Nick Heifold up into fourth place. He's 8.6 seconds and finally Hamilton rejoins, but that is an expensive mistake. Just ahead of Felipe Massa there. And in fact, Raikkonen more than comfortably jumped to the Brazilian. So yeah, Massa's pace has been very poor since his pit stop. And he's about to go a lap down on the race leaders as well. There was a previous thought I had in my head, but yeah. So the British Grand Prix, the next race after this one. Then we actually stay in the United Kingdom for the European Grand Prix. We go to the East Midlands for the Donington Park circuit. That should be an interesting one to watch. And then after Donington, there'll be the next set, the next window to use your upgrade tokens. And make that flat spot just a little bit bigger there, Nico. Got Weber and Sato right together now. Let's have a look at that, please, because that is a battle for the that is a battle to watch. Could be important for the championship as well, particularly with Jensen Button out of the race and looking looking. Well, he's not going to score. Adrian Sutter turning left. Pretty good, hitting the apex pretty well. Yeah, the gap between Weber and Sato, just four, sec four tenths of a second. There's going to be an overtake happening soon. And I'm going to keep an eye, a very, very keen eye on that one. And I found nine seconds behind Adrian Sutter now, as we go on board with Mark Weber. Ideally, we should be going on board with the other driver, the one right behind him, Takuma Sato. Just three tenths of a second going into the Remus curve. Sato not attempting an overtake at that point. Not quite close enough for the for the dive bomb.
into the Gersa curve. And Sato not close enough yet, but yeah, he is right behind. This is Sato's to win. If Weber puts up a stern defence, then he might well he might well hold on to it, but Sato is the quicker driver at the moment. So it could be that the Toyota team have gone a little bit softer with their tyres. Maybe that's why Weber took pole position and why Sato didn't take pole position. In fact, he wasn't even on the front row. As, whoa, Hulkenberg versus Massa going into the Jochen Rint curve. That's not for position, because Massa's in 13th and Hulkenberg is 18th and last. Yeah, Massa's definitely not, not comfortable at this stage of the race as Hulkenberg gains a lap on Super Aguirre. Well done. All these, all these, the tyres that he's on at the moment, imagine his eyeballs are being shaken to pieces as up the inside into the Remus curve goes Takuma Sato, oh, nearly tagging the back of the Toyota of Mark Webber and ripping his, nearly ripping his front wing off. Actually, it is worth mentioning, Takuma Sato has lost two wins this season. One was his crash at the Japanese Grand Prix as putting a lap on Timo Glock is Adrian Suttle there and he lost a win at Hockenheim as well when Sebastian Vettel crashed out at the Nord Curve and the debris that was flung back onto the circuit was unfortunately collected by Takuma Sato and he had to do a whole lap with no front wing. And you'll have done well to spot that because I certainly didn't. And you could just about see, if you watch that race back, you could just about see the Honda of Takuma Sato piling into Vettel's loose wheel but you can only see it for about three tenths on screen. That was through the Jochen Rint curve for Adrian Suttle into the Nicky Lauda curve goes Nico Hulkenberg. Suttle extending the gap between himself and Nick Heidfeld fourth place. 9.4 seconds the gap between those two Germans. Alonso's in fifth, 1.2 seconds behind Nick Heidfeld so he's not doing too badly at the moment. And that's a spectacular view we're just looking at there. If we have another look at the left-hand side shot when you go to a, a car, then you'll be able to see from turn two all the way down to turn, well, turn three actually, down to turn one the Nicky Lauda curve. You can see the elevation that this circuit provides. It really is. It's a magnificent looking circuit as well with mountains in the background, some of which, if you look, they still have snow on them. But yeah, lots of pine trees. One of the more scenic races. I do like it. Some do prefer the Österreich ring and fair enough that was a very unique circuit. Just fast all the way through. But this one does provide some decent racing and is potentially some decent racing as Ricardo takes Timo Glock for 15th place. Suttles into the pits. So maybe that's why he was able to extend the gap between himself and Nick Heidfeld. Slightly less few compared to the Williams. And what have we got here? Kobayashi putting a lap on the Toro Rosso as he comes into the pits. Kamui Kobayashi making a pit stop. And I think Sebastian Vettel's just come into the pits as well. So that's... Well, it's moved Fernando Alonso up to fourth place, but that was courtesy of Sutter. Heidfeld briefly up to third. And... And we're going to see Robert Kubica briefly move up to 6th place. That'd be, that'd be quite something, actually, considering that he's not had a particularly stellar race. Yeah, Kubica briefly moved up to 6th place. As Sutter lets the pits just ahead of Matthias Lauda, by the looks of it. There's the battle for the lead. Sato's just taken it. That was going into the Jochen Rint curve. Sato has done it. He's caught Weber. He's passed Weber. And... Surely he'll be pulling away from Weber because I'm pretty sure he is the quicker driver at the moment. But so, now is Takuma Sato going to take his first win of the season? Well, we've still got 22 laps to go, and if I have just to put the commentator's curse on him, I'm sorry. As Fernando Alonso comes into the pits from fourth place. Now his target, well... I suspect his target is actually the driver in front of him, Nick Heidfeld, but if Alonso's had to pick first, then that will benefit hey, Heidfeld. And Christian Albers coming into the pits as well, temporarily from fifth place. Kubica are in as well, so that'll all move Adrian Suttle back up to fourth place. 
and that should be third once Nick Heidfeld makes his second pit stop. There is the German we are looking at. Now where those three drivers, Alonso, Albers and Kubica, are going to rejoin in relation to Raikkonen? Well, Raikkonen's got ahead of Kubica and Albers and Alonso. So Kimi Raikkonen is now up to sixth place and that will probably become fifth once Matthias Lauda makes a pit stop. Sato and Webb, oh! Off the track goes Hulkenberg, same place as before, but much simpler route back onto the circuit because he didn't spin it. Just an off-track excursion this time around. Yeah, Sato and Webber both in the pits on the same lap, as was the case when they came in for their first pit stops on lap 22. So running identical pit stop strategies. So it's purely that the Honda of Sato is quicker than Webber in the Toyota. Actually, Webber's just jumped Sato. Scrap that. Mark Webber's just retaken the lead back from Takuma Sato. So he's jumped him in the pit stops. Obviously, the Toyota pit garage is... Well, let me try and work this out, actually. So, the Honda pit garage is further on than Toyota. And normally, you'd favour a pit garage, which is further back, because the drivers are a bit courteous when you're leaving, when in the pits. So, yeah, Weber back in the effective net lead. It's Nick Heidfeld at the moment who leads, but with a second pit stop to make. And... Nick Heifeld's target, make sure to get out back ahead of Kimi Raikkonen. He's done quite well actually to get back into fifth place after, well he was running second before that early pit stop and yeah he's done well I'd say. So Kimi Raikkonen at least staying in some form of contention. Certainly for the championship because he wasn't that far behind Jensen Button who has of course crashed out. Heifeld into the pits for his second pit stop. So now, battle for the lead, probably resumed once again, and you can see the gap that Webber's got over Sato. Sato must have been particularly generous when letting Webber through in the pits. So, having caught up to Webber, he's got to do that all over again, but same age tyres as was the case after the first round of pit stops, so Sato can still do it, he just needs to be aggressive and forceful. Now, keep an eye on where Heidfeld rejoins, he's behind Suttil, that shouldn't be too surprising. Does he still rejoin ahead of Kimi Raikkonen? Raikkonen fifth at the moment in the McLaren. And I think he has crossed a sector point, but I think Heidfeld has maintained fourth position. Let's see the gap between the two as they go through the first sector point. You can see Heidfeld here is. 9.3 seconds behind Sutter. It was only just ahead of Kimi Raikkonen as well as just three tenths of a second as they cross the first sector point going into the Remus curve. Now let's see Mark Webber versus Takuma Sato. It was 1.7 seconds as they started this lap and once again Takuma Sato appears to be the quicker driver at this stage. It's down to 1.560 seconds. Webber's pole position I suspect it is either soft or medium tyres that the Toyota have taken for this race. And if it's soft, then the Honda would have taken the medium of the hards. Or, if Toyota are running the mediums, then the Honda's running the hard tyres for this race. Another tenth of a second gained in that first sector, which pretty much just consists of one corner, the Nicky Lauda curve. Down to the Gerst curve, you can see a couple of black lines at the braking zone where a lot of drivers, mostly Nico Hulkenberg, have locked up. And a little bit of a black line there of rubber from those front tyres. And I suspect on the, in the case of Nico Hulkenberg, it would be like driving on a 50 pence. On a couple of 50 pences, actually. A quid, basically. That's through the left, that's one of the Force Indias we're looking at. That's third place Adrian Suttil on course for a podium finish. And wouldn't that be a deserved result after the after the pain that Force India have gone through in the past three races? I suspect they have used some upgrade tokens for this, or maybe they just aced the session, the testing session. That's Hamilton versus Glock, but that is her position actually, because of course Hamilton had that big off earlier on from 4th place as well and that's put in behind the Ferrari the one stopping Timo Glock 
but he's now up the inside into the Gersa curve and he's taken Fox into position off of the German driver. And by the way, Massa's one-stop strategy really hasn't worked at all because he's out of the points at the top 10 as Mark Webber suffers from a bit of understeer going into the left, now into the Berger curve. Long-ish left, not quite as long as the first left. And a little right kink over the crest under the A1. Few A1s on the right. Turn into the Jochen Rink curve. And then short straight before the undulating Red Bull curve. But that is the gap between Weber and Sato. Less than a second now, so Sato's going to be getting some slipstream once again. Into the Nicky Lauda curve. And out of it goes to Kuma Sato. You can see traffic in front of Weber. It's Timo Glock in his immediate vicinity. That's 15th place, Timo Glock. You can see some, you can see some number 11s in the braking zone into the Venus curve as well. So some drivers have struggled with bit with the brakes, particularly with tyres as well. As Adrian Sutter, we're having a look at the overhead shot. Christian Alba is putting a lap or attempting to put a lap on the Toro Rosso, but Paul De Resta should be breathing out of the throttle, and he does so. And that's a that's easily done there for Albers. Who's he? Where is he in the race? He's in ninth at the moment. As now Sato has got Timo Glock to negotiate, and he should do it no problem going over the crest. And now he resumes his pursuit of Mark Webber. His second pursuit of Mark Webber. Seeing if there's a battle between Heidfeld and Raikkonen, I don't think so because Heidfeld on his newer tyres compared to Raikkonen is... Oh, Weber locking up and making a mistake under braking for the first corner. And is that going to give Sato the opportunity side by side going down the straight approach in the Remus curve and Sato is going to take the lead. Much quicker, much more quicker than he did in that middle stint as braking into the Remus curve. He's got it. Turning in. And now Mark Weber. He's probably going to have to settle for second now because, as mentioned before, I don't think he is as quick as Takuma Sato in this race. Kimi Raikkonen, there he is in fifth place. Sandwiched by Nick Heidfeld there and behind him Fernando Alonso. We might see a battle, actually, between Raikkonen and Alonso. Raikkonen, although he is pretty good at looking after his tyres, is pretty clear that new tyres are better than old tyres. So he'll do well to hold on to fifth place, I reckon. I'm just working out what that will do for the championship. Well, 10 points will put Raikkonen on 92 points. Uh, but 25 points will put Takuma Sato from a 71 on to 96. So that will jump Sato into the lead of the championship if he stays where he is. But he has been unlucky before. So let's hope for him and Honda's sake that the luck will hold out. I'm looking at the gap between Weber and Sutto. That's coming down a bit, but... Weber has eked out a tenth over Sutil in that first, in that final sector. Sutil's 14 seconds behind Weber at the moment, and doing a very good job in that Force India. Is this a battle on position? I don't think it was, but anyway, it was Nico Hulkenberg trying to get ahead of a Toro Rosso, but with Adrian Sutil right behind, looking to lap them both. Three drivers together, but the curious than not none of them are for position. I do think Alonso is closing in on Kimi Raikkonen. It's 1.3 seconds as they cross their last sector points. Just trying to work out where that would be in relation to the race leaders. And there is Sato going through the final couple of corners and he is really pulling out the gap between himself and Mark Webber. Mark Webber's third set of tyres are really not working well. Is now 1.9 seconds behind the Japanese driver. And Sutil, 14.1 as they crossed the third sector point. It's 14.2. So, Adrian Sutil, he could well have had traffic to deal with, and he's using a Hulkenberg and Toro Rosso sandwich. So, that would explain some of that for Sutil. Heidfeld in fourth and looking more comfortable as the laps go by in fourth place. Some 8 point something seconds, how much is that? 8.8 .8 seconds behind Sutil. Uh, that was the view I was referring to earlier on, got 
conifer trees and mountains in the background. Now then, subtle. No, it's not subtle. What am I on about? It's the Renault of Robert Kubica, who's made his way into the points. That's pretty impressive from where he started on the grid, and considering where he was in that first stint as well. It's a decent drive once again, and good race pace from the Renault, but qualifying, although it was a little bit better this time around, is still very much an Achilles heel for the Renault team. He's not that far behind Christian Albers, so we could be seeing a battle for ninth in the closing laps between Albers and Kubica. What of the rest? Well, we've got Alonso, he's 1.4 seconds now behind Kimi Reitman, so Alonso struggling to catch up to the McLaren driver. I think the McLaren is fundamentally quite a good car compared to the Super Guri. Although the Super Gary did get a splendid podium last time out at Monaco. Even with the combination of Alonso and Massa, the Super Gary, I think, I think is not quite as good as the McLaren. 2.8 seconds behind Fernando Alonso is Sebastian Vettel in 7th place. Um, let's see, I'll try and monitor the gap between those two. At the moment it is 2.8 seconds, we'll wait until we pass a sector point to see if it grows or diminishes. Stayed about the same, so I think Vettel is pretty much there in 7th place. Kobayashi, who's had a pretty good race actually to get into the points, don't think he qualified that well for this race. As way onto the curbs, once again, I think, I think he spent half the race on the curbs, is Nico Hulkenberg. Certainly spent half the race flat spotting his tyres. Yeah, the gap is closing a bit between Albers and Kobayashi, 1.2 seconds. 11th place at the moment is Matthias Lauda. And he's less than 3 seconds behind Robert Kubica. But 11th certainly doesn't sound as good as where your teammate is in the first place. As we look at the long shot of Sato and Weber going into the left. And then into another left goes to Kumasato. Not long to go now, just it'll be 11 laps to go once Sato crosses the line. And on course to take his first win of the season, and if he does, we'll go into the championship lead ahead of Kimi Raikkonen. We will jump Jensen, but off the track goes Hulkenberg. Is it going to make the barriers? It is this time, so. A very eventful race comes to a very unsatisfactory end of the tyre in the way, and that's hit the Williams. Is that Heidfeld that it hit? I think it was. And there's a Super Gary hit the tyre as well. So, is anybody going to make a pit stop from that? It's certainly the Williams, and certainly the Super Gary hit the errant wheel of Nico Hulkenberg. Keep an eye out on it. They may well have just gotten away with it because they've, they've not entered the pits. Lucky escapes then for Nick Heidfeld and Fernando Alonso as Hulkenberg begins the slow and embarrassing saunter to the to the crane which is situated somewhere somewhere further back. So curiously in exactly the same place as Montoya and also Rubens Barrichello early in the race as well. Alonso did get to less than a second behind Raikkonen, but maybe because of that little uh, little scare with the um, wheels of Hulkenberg, he's now more than a second behind Raikkonen, but Alonso certainly was catching up to Raikkonen, and we could be seeing a battle for fifth in the closing stages. We're now down to 17 runners now. Paul de Resta is the last of those 17, and five retirements and they consist of Nico Hulkenberg, there he is, still sauntering back. And then we had his teammate, uh, Juan Pablo Montoya, crashing out at that corner. As Giubianchi flat spots his right front tyre going into the Williams curve. Other retirements are both BMW Saubers, the Renault of Rubens Barrichello and Sergio Perez blown engine in the Ferrari and then astonishingly Jensen Button from the race lead at that same corner as both BMW Sabers and Rubens Barrichello as finally Hulkenberg gets winched away. 
So there is Jules Bianchi ahead of Timo Brock. That is 14th and 15th place for those two. Brock's one-stop strategy not working well. And behind that is Daniel Ricciardo, 16th, and the Toro Rosso, other one, 17th of Paul Di Resta. So Hamilton's 13th at the moment. Who on earth is in 12th place? I think it's Felipe Massa in the Super Aguri. And then in front of Massa, goodness knows how much by, because the timing graphic at the bottom goes from 1st to 11th. Used to go, used to cycle between the entire field, but sticks to the 1st and 11th this time around. This is an overhead shot of Adrian Sutton going into the Venus curve. And now we switch to the external shot of Takuma Sato as his teammate goes way off the circuit at the Jochen Rink curve. And that's made it as far as the barrier this time. I think he's knocked an end plate off. In fact, he's knocked his rear wing off. So, louder doing what Hamilton and Hulkenberg didn't manage to do and Daniel Ricciardo. And that was make it as far as the barrier at the exit of the Jochen Rink curve. So that has moved Felipe Massa up into 11th place as Lauda looks for a gap to try and get into the pits. I think he's managed to do that. In fact, it's a battle for 11th between Massa, who is on very, very used tyres, against Lewis Hamilton, who is looking up the inside into that left-hand kink of turn two. Is he going to manage that, or is Massa going to chop in front? He is indeed, but only on to 11th place at the moment, but very... But what looks like a temporary... Oh, off the track goes Kimi Raikkonen. Kimi Raikkonen spinning out from fifth place. And he's going to rejoin in seventh. So, Kimi Raikkonen making a mistake at the Jochen Rink curve. Exactly as Matthias Lauda did just a lap ago. But Raikkonen managing to stay on the circuit. And he has dropped down to seventh behind Fernando Alonso and Sebastian Vettel. I wonder if that's down to tyres because Raikkonen's two-stopping strategy first stop came very early so he's had to bring that back and to a certain extent he's had to bring his second pit stop forward as well so yeah I think Raikkonen's tyre is getting a little bit old now as Hamilton has finally taken Felipe Massa for 11th place what's that going to do with Raikkonen's championship chances well it's 6 points now for 7th place that'll put you on 88 so that will put you back in 3rd in the championship behind Sato and Button We've still got six or so laps to go. We are on board with Felipe Massa. You can tell because of the day glow helmet on the right hand side. And he's pretty much just gone a lap down. He's nearly a lap down on Mark Webber. He is a lap down on Sato, who himself is about to put a lap on Lewis Hamilton. Oh, Matthias Loud has crashed out. So that's. Yeah, he's, that was from his rear wing problem in the pits. And I don't think he's quite managed to make it back properly. So maybe trying to make it back into the pits, he's done some further damage against another barrier. That seems a likely explanation. And now Massa lap down on Mark Webber. So after this, there'll be six laps to go. And it's still Takuma Sato leading. It was 2.4 seconds. Sato has got Lewis Hamilton in front of him to put a lap on. Turning right at the Nicky Lauda curve goes Weber. How many points has he got at the moment? He has got 51 points. So that'll put him at a second place up to 69 points. Still fourth in the championship. <laughs> Worth mentioning, actually, Lewis Hamilton, very briefly, is in fifth place in the championship with some decent point scores for his Red Bull, but at the moment in 11th place, and I think he will drop behind Adrian Sutter as a result of that. At Massa putting, trying to unlap himself from Mark Webber there. That's a headache that Webber and Toyota could do without. Yeah, Sutter will definitely be get ahead of Lewis Hamilton after this race with his third place. He's only one point behind Hamilton and 15 points will boost his points tally quite nicely. And Takuma Sato, is that exiting the final corner? I think it was. There's the grid hatchings and five laps to go now. There's Takuma Sato, is 3.7 seconds ahead of Mark Webber now who had a feisty Massa to deal with. That's 
most of the field set, although the two McLarens could go into battle for seventh place. Kobayashi is just one second behind Raikkonen. Raikkonen probably suffering on all the tyres. And that spin, which certainly worked on his tyres, much good. Christian Alba's ninth, but Kibitz is right behind him, actually. Yeah, the battle for ninth is not settled yet, so we could be seeing some action there. Raikkonen putting, pulling out a tenth over Kobayashi, so Kimi looking to assert his dominance over the Japanese driver. Certainly in qualifying, he has asserted his dominance because Raikkonen is 7 nil up on his Japanese teammate in terms of out qualifications. And then I think the Honda battle is similarly one-sided as well. Best qualifier average overall is actually Kimi Raikkonen. And then shortly followed by the two Toyotas. In fact, it must be Weber, Sato and then Button, if I remember rightly. The average qualifying positions. But yeah, Kimi Raikkonen leads the way on the, his on the average qualifying position. As his teammate has a bit of a lock-up on his left front tyre going into the left. Kobayashi sniffs a seventh. There it is right in front of him. But he lost a bit of time in that middle sector. He's lost a lot of time in that middle sector. Well, four tenths per second. That mistake cost him in the end. Let's see the battle for ninth, actually, between Albers and Bitzer, because that's now less than half a second. So those two drivers are going to go into combat with each other pretty shortly. As through the middle sector goes Matt Webber, into the burger curve goes Matt Webber, out of the burger curve goes Matt Webber, and he's more than three seconds off of Takuma Sato now. 3.8 behind the three-time champion. Looking on course to take his first win of the season. Just three laps to go. He's still not put a lap on Lewis Hamilton yet. And both of those are on fairly similar aged tyres. As Heidfeld puts a lap on Timo Glock. Heidfeld up in fourth place, so that'll be some good points for the Williams team. Glock in 15th place. No points at all for the Ferrari team. Uh, who else has done quite a lot? So, we'll have 25 points for the Honda team, 18 for the Toyota team. Then you've got 15 plus 2 for Force India, Adrian Suttil 3rd and Albert 9th. Then Williams will have 12 points, Supergirl 10, Red Bull will have 8. Then McLaren, 6 plus 4 equals 10, so outscoring Red Bull despite Vettel being in the higher place. And then 1 point for Renault, but Still a few laps to go, just two and a half now for Takuma Sato, two and a third actually, as he crosses the third, second sector point, into the third sector, and Kubica has taken Christian Elvis for ninth place. So that must have been going into probably the first corner, maybe even the Remus curve. I think it must have been the first corner, because they've just crossed the first sector point, look at that. Lewis Hamilton not making it easy at all for Takuma Sato. As Adrian Sutto now has traffic to deal with in front of him, in the form of the Toro Rosso of Daniel Ricciardo. There's Lewis Hamilton. Still not making it easy for Sato. In fact, Webber's caught up two, two and a half seconds now behind Sato, so yeah. Hamilton doing Sato absolutely no favours at all. Very rude. Now with Kubica up to 9th place, that will put, give him 2 points for the Renault team, but that won't make any difference to the 10th place that they sit in the championship at the moment. Now then, Force India. Yeah, they'll pull away a bit from Super Aguri. And how far are they behind Honda? Yeah, they're miles behind Honda. So Super Aguri will be... No, maybe not actually. With Williams' as ascent. 12 points. Nah, Super Gary will still be ahead of Williams. Speaking of which, there is Felipe Massa. Going for 12th place, a lap down on Sato. And miles behind Lewis Hamilton. On pretty rubbish tyres at the moment, because he made his first pit st first and only pit stop pretty much just before half distance. So he's had to carry that, and it's not really worked out. But there is your race leader, Takuma Sato. Now he has finally put that lap on Lewis Hamilton. 
It's just clear track in front of him and about two and a half kilometers to go before his first win of the season. He's still got the Gersa curve to negotiate. That's no problem through there. There's a, the end of the Gersa curve and then a few more corners to go. One, two, three, four and five corners to go. That's one of them gone. Here comes another two in quick succession. Looks at the Gerhard Berg curve. You can see him, he's ahead of Lewis Hamilton, but we are looking at Hamilton. Just two more corners to go now for Takuma Sato as he goes through the Jochenlin curve. Just the Red Bull ring, the Red Bull curve to go. And out of it, and Takuma Sato takes his first win of the season. And with it, he will propel himself into the championship lead. A few points ahead of Jensen Button and Kimi Raikkonen. And Mark Webber comes home in second. Could have been a win, but Sato was the quicker driver on the day. And third place, returning to the podium. First one since Adelaide is Adrian Sutil. Well done. That's a deserved result for him. And Gilles Bianchi, Daniel Ricciardo, 13th and 14th. Nick Heidfeld should come home in fourth place. Yep, confirmed fourth for the Williams team. Got Fernando Alonso to come home in fifth. Ahead of a lapped Timo Glock. Sebastian Vettel comes home in 6th place for the Red Bull and then we've got the two McLarens. Kimi Raikkonen ran 2nd in the early stages but suffered a mechanical gremlin which was remedied in a pit stop and as a result finishing 7th and that was including an off in the closing stages as well. Good drive from Robert Kubica to come home in ninth and completing the points Christian Albers in the Force India. So that's two Force Indias in the top 10 and that will put them comfortably in fourth place now ahead of Super Gary. So 16 points plus 61 points for Force India team and Super Gary 55 points. Red Bull will have 52 points and Williams will have 45 points. Quick look at the results confirming Takuma Sato's win. So that was the Austrian Grand Prix. And there's a look at the list of retirements. Just the one mechanical one, uh, Sergio Perez with an engine failure. We'll move over from Austria to uh, the United Kingdom for two races, first of which the British Grand Prix at Silverstone. So we shall see you then. <laughs> 